Hello everybody, it's Kevin here again and this week we're going to be going over some API authentication. So just to put it simply, APIs are secure by nature. That, that's, that's just what they, that's one of their biggest uh, advantages are. So with, while, while knowing that, we might have data that that API might return that we don't want anybody to access or everybody to access. So what we can do is we can add some sort of authentication. Now we can do something simple like if the user enters a password, for example, then grant them access. But there is a more secure way that uses hashing and it's, it's more industry standard to do it this way. So that's the way that I'm going to be demonstrating today. So to start off, I'm just going to create a blank project here, an API here. So ASP.NET Core Web API. Just going to call this auth. See, auth lecture. Six point oh preview. So to start off, we're going to want to open up NuGet, the NuGet package manager. So NuGet here. And we're going to need to install some packages here. So first, just got to ensure that ASP.NET Core is installed. And then there's a there's two other packages that uh, that we have to install. So I'm going to pull those up here on another project that I have them open on. Give me a second. I will pull it up here. So we will install the following packages here. It will be Microsoft.ASP.NET Core and here it shows up ASP.NET Core dot authentication. So first this one here. We're going to install that one. Accept all license agreements. And then we're going to install the JWT Bear package. So these will enable authentication in our project and we will have to do a little bit of configuration in our uh, program.cs file but it's relatively straightforward. So what we have to do first is we have to create a class. We're going to call this class JWT Authentication Manager. So I'm going to add a class here. Once that class is added, I'm going to add some some stuff here to it. So it's it's pretty much a template, so you can you can modify this as as you wish. Now I will go and I have it pulled up on the other side, but I'll I'll go through what some of the stuff that's going on here. So to begin, we're going to declare a key. So just a read-only key. And then we're going to need a dictionary. Of type string string. And I'm going to name this users. And I'm going to add some stuff to this dictionary. So I'm going to add a username of test. And then a password of password. And then I'm going to add another username of test1 and another password of PWD. Once that is done, we're going to end that there. Now I have something a little messed up here. There we go. Next we're going to create a constructor, so public. JWT authentication manager that's going to take in the key. This will be important for our initial uh, setup in the program.cs file. Then we're going to have to create a function here called authenticate. So 
that's just going to return a string. It's going to take in a string username and a string password. And I'm just going to return null for now. So first we have to check if um, we, we have to do a user check. So if users.any, so we're just going to do a little bit of link here. Next, we're going to create a JWT security token handler. And once we start making a couple calls to some of the JWT stuff, we're going to need to add a couple uh, imports on the top. So I'm just going to copy these imports. I'm going to paste them up here. Make note of them. They will also be available in the lecture notes. So just authentication or authorization, tokens, system.txt for some byte handling, and uh, security claims then identity model dot tokens so first I'm gonna create a JWT security token handler I'm just gonna call that token handler after that I'm gonna create a token key so variable token key We're just going to use ASCII encoding. We're going to pass in the key to the getBytes function. Then we're going to have to create a security token descriptor. I'm going to call this token descriptor. And we're going to do some operations in here. So First, we need a subject here. We need to define the subject. After that, we have to set the ex, uh, the duration of the token. So that's just set by the expires variable here, or expires property. And it's just going to expire in one hour. Then we have to define the signing credentials. have to define the the algorithm so it's just going to be HMAC SHA256 signature once that's done we have to define a token variable pass in the token descriptor into that and finally we're going to return the uh, token so it's just token handler dot write token and then it's going to take in the token once this is done got to make sure that it all looks good no errors and that does look good so far so what we can do now is we got to go to our program.cs file we gotta add a couple gotta add a couple imports here. So 
So some of these are the same as the ones that we used over here, but we will also need to add the namespace. So using auth lecture, auth lecture. This will be dependent on what you named your project. If you don't add this, you'll run into a problem when you're creating the singleton. So what we have to do is right after add swagger gen, just add some. Oh, you don't want that. There we go. Just so we know what our little space is here. So first we have to define a key. And this key has to be, um, it's got to be greater than I believe eight characters in length, it may be more. So I'm just going to name this key lecture test. And I'm going to add some, some numbers to this, so one, two, three, four. After this, we, had to add, we have to add the add authentication uh, builder service, so builder.services.add authentication. And it's just going to be a lambda. So first x dot, which is what we defined here, x dot default authentication scheme, we're going to have to define that. And it's just going to be a GWT bearer default. Then the challenge scheme is going to be set to the same as up here. After that, we got to add a little bit more stuff here. So add the, add the GWT bearer. Once again, another lambda here. Lambda or anonymous function depends on what uh, programming language you're familiar with. Anonymous function might be what you called it in JavaScript or in TypeScript. Uh, Lambda might be from Java. It's, uh, it, it all refers to the same thing, mostly. <laughs> There's probably going to be some purists down in the comments or something saying no. So x dot request HTTPS metadata. And we're going to assign false to that boolean. We're just basically just configuring the authentication here. So if you have any issues or if it's not acting right, just look at your settings here. You're manually setting it here and you might be able to fix it that way. Uh, one other thing to note is ensure that you use the same encoding as you used in your GWT authentication manager. I'm just going to double check that I'm still recording. Yep, looks good. We want to validate our issuer, of course. Or I'm sorry, for this example we don't want to validate our issuer. That. Uh, delves into this authentication stuff a little deeper. We're just going to cover the basics here. You can try it and that might be a little bit problematic. Now I may, yes, I think I am missing some stuff. There we go. So now we need to add the singleton. So builder dot services dot add singleton. It's going to be a singleton of type GWT authentication manager. Pass in the key. So this is the constructor that we defined earlier.
then we're going to have our app.build and we have to do one more thing here so right where it says app.use authorization we need to do before that app.use authentication what am I missing there you go and we have one error here let's see here oh it carried it over so this is good so far and we're gonna just try to build a project right now looks good it built so we're gonna try running it now this isn't gonna authenticate anything currently because we haven't we haven't told it what to authenticate and what to allow to make calls without authentication so this should just work so if you have uh, get user info route in your database or in your API that makes a call to the database and you don't have any authentication that API is exposed uh, anybody will be able to access that so that's of course an issue what we can do to fix that though is we can go to our controller and we gotta make a couple imports here so we have our ASP.NET Core.MVC we're also gonna need the authorization And that'll just be for the routes for defining the routes and we're gonna have we're gonna have two routes here so the first route is gonna be this one here this one we're already familiar with and then the second route is going to be an authorized route which we have to allow anonymous so first I'm gonna say that this here route needs authorization so we're just gonna enter authorize here after that we're gonna create another route which is going to allow any user to make a call to it. Then it's just going to be HTTP POST. It's going to return an iAction result. And I haven't defined the user class here, so or the model, so we have to do that here first. What we need to do is we need to create a token. And before we even do this, we need to add another constructor up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this here constructor. I'm going to define a read-only JWT authentication manager instance. and then I'm going to define a constructor it's going to take in an instance of GWT authentication manager I wonder if no that's spelled right oh 
I'm going to pause quickly just to clean this up. I think I misspelled it, but that is fixed now. And what we're going to do is, I'm just going to get rid of that. Start this here. Oh, and I didn't finish. I didn't finish this here stuff. So we're going to go back to our authorize, authorize function. So define our token. JWT authentication manager dot authenticate. We're going to pass in the user, uh, the username and the password. And if the token is null, we're going to return an un unauthorized status code. If not, we're just going to return OK with the token. So if we try starting this, we're going to try to make a call to just to get weather forecast. Four hundred one unauthorized. That looks good. Now, if we send a request to this here, the authorized portion well first I'm just gonna I'm gonna try something that's wrong it's 401 unauthorized and I gotta make sure that that's the password that I set test password And looks like we may have had an issue here. I'm just going to pause and get that rectified. Okay, so if you if you run into this issue, uh, like I said earlier, uh, the key has to be a certain length. And my key was actually not long enough, so I just added three dollar signs to this, and it works fine now. So I'm going to pull up that once again, and it did return a key. So once again, if we try user, that's not going to work because user is not set. But if we do test, we'll get a key. So how do we make a call to the weather forecast controller here? Or to this uh, to this get, this get route in this controller? Well it's gonna be a little bit it's gonna be kind of difficult within Swagger UI, so I'm just gonna use Postman. You can open up Postman. We need the port, so seven two zero three. And this is just weather forecast slash authorize. Okay. I don't see any API reference there, so I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to pass in some data here. So the username is going to be user password. It's going to be password. So if I recall correctly, this should not work, especially if it's not the right type of route. Okay. I want to set the right stuff up here and then I'll be right back. And here's a little trick if you don't know the exact 
uh, the exact route, the exact link. You can just go on under the uh, where the curl the curl call is defined. So you could actually paste this into your uh, CMD or terminal, whatever you're using, and it'll actually execute this request. So of course this did not work. 401 unauthorized, but if I pass and test, we'll get a key. So I'm going to copy that key. I'm going to go back to weather forecast. And this is just a get. I'm going to get rid of all this form data. So I'm going to get rid of this token as well. I'm going to try to send that request. 401 unauthorized. So you can go to authorization. And we're just going to select bear token. Paste in the token. And there's our data. 200 OK. If this token is modified, we're going to run into an issue. So we can write a script here. We can write a script where uh, once, especially here, this would be the better example, once we are authorized, we can write a script in pre-request script and define a variable. So we define a global up here of t just a, a string global and just name that key, for example, or token. And then in our pre-request script, we could set that variable when we call this authorized route and when we go to make a call to our we will make a call to this here on a, or this authorized route like the route that requires authorization uh, that token if you set it under authorization here so instead of doing that if you were to just do token and you've defined it then it'll it'll always be updated that's a pretty cool trick And one more thing, if we make this call once again, we do have access to that call here, similar to Swagger. So if I open up Git Bash, I paste this in, Shift Insert. Okay, we're running into an HTTP issue, but or an SSL certificate issue I should say but if you have all that configured you can just make calls within your terminal so that's pretty convenient sometimes depending on if you have this stuff installed or not so that just about wraps it up just remember if you want something to be authorized just add this add this authorize portion up here and if you want any individual to call this just add allow anonymous but that's the basics, so thank you for watching, and if you run into any issues, just uh, reach out to me. So you all take care.